In this video, we're going to take a very quick glance at the Vibrant Micronutrient 3.0 test. We'll explain how to order it, who to order it on, and do a brief five-minute walkthrough of the report. The Vibrant Micronutrient 3.0 test um, is a really great test to start with, and some of the main strengths and points of this test are that it is both intracellular and extracellular as far as the views of the micronutrients that you're going to see on the test. You get a direct measurement on mass spectrometry, um, which is the industry gold standard for measuring micronutrients. We do give you graphical reporting of results, and it's also a foundational test for pretty much all chronic inflammatory conditions. Folks with chronic inflammatory conditions are all gonna have some sort of micronutrient deficiency, so you can never really go wrong there. It's also what I call a quick win for you and your patients. Micronutrient deficiencies are relatively straightforward. Um, it's either going to be primary from diet or secondary um, as far as an inflammatory depletion and both diet and supplementation are fairly straightforward as far as correcting those micronutrient deficiencies in interventions. Your ordering options when you go to order this test, really quick before we get into the test itself, this is going to be under the Vibrant America tab in the ordering portal. You're going to look over to the far right side of the screen and you're going to see where it says micronutrients. Click on that where it's underlined. That's a link. And what will open is this window here. As if you want to order the entire test, which 99.9% .9 of the time, that is what you're trying to order is the entire test. You're just going to click the box next to micronutrient and it will select all of the other boxes for you automatically. If for some reason you are not trying to order the entire test and you just want to order individual markers or only intracellular or only extracellular, then you do have the ability to select individual markers. However, most of the time you actually wanna order the entire thing. So once you click that micronutrient box, this is what you should see display. The entire thing is checked. All right, so let's jump into that five minutes with micronutrient. Let's walk through the report really quick and we'll talk about which patients are best to order this test on. Okay, so quickly let's walk through the sample report really fast and I'll tell you what type of sections you can anticipate seeing here. The first section that you're gonna find is what we call the dial charts. And these give you a really quick look at what you might want to look for next. So let's say that you have run this on a patient that um, you're not really sure what's going on. Maybe they just have a lot of global and generic symptoms and you don't really know what to look for quite yet. So this can kind of give you um, some pointers for, you know, maybe you might want to look for um, some, you know, neurological things for this patient. Perhaps there's some gastrointestinal things going on, um, so on and so forth. So as you look through this, this is going to tell you based on their low micronutrients, these are areas or other organ systems that this patient may have some risk or may have some uh, complications showing up. Next, you're going to get a nice summary table of just the micronutrients that were found that were abnormal. It's going to tell you if they were intracellular or extracellular and whether they were high or low. And so that way you can just very briefly gl glance at this and decide, okay, I'm seeing certain patterns here. And we also give you common food sources of those. If you want to be able to just hand this to the patient, you can also write in what your suggested supplementation is. Um, there is a feature in our provider portal where you can personalize micronutrient suggestions using a tool. Um, but if you simply just want to quickly write this in on the patient's report, you also have the opportunity to do that as well. The next section, um, a lot of people miss this. There is actually a quick interpretation guide on the test that gives you the basics of what patterns you might see. If you see normal levels of intracellular, however, the serum levels or extracellular are deficient, these are things you wanna look for and so on and so forth for other patterns. Now we get to the actual values. So we're going to give you for everything we tested, not just the things that were abnormal, we're gonna give you the actual values for the intra and extracellular levels. 
if this is the if this is not the first time you've run this test on the same patient, you're also going to see their previous values show up, which is a really nice way of looking at patterns. And especially when we get to the graphical reporting, you'll see that as well. So you can also take a look at this and get a lot more detail. After we give you these tables, we're also going to give you the white blood cell count so that you can um, essentially interpret this in context of that person's white blood cells, which is where the intracellular values come from. And that way you have an idea of if this was a normal count or normal cell count for that patient. The next feature, um, so let's say you want to dive even deeper, not just the actual values, but you want to look at them if you're a visual person in relation to the reference ranges. So that's going to be the next section. This is the same information you got before. It's just presented in a little bit different format. So I'm going to scroll all the way past all of these. And the last feature of the report, which is something that a lot of people don't realize is here, and sometimes they miss it, for all of the values or all of the nutrients that had an abnormal value, we actually give you a really detailed breakdown of the nutrient, where it comes from, how it can become depleted, what the clinical manifestations of depletion might look like, food sources, if there are some available, as well as supplementation options. So there is a lot of information here as far as how to interpret the report that you can find in the actual report itself. Okay. Anyone who comes in your office is a candidate. Remember when I said that this is great for chronic inflammatory conditions, the micronutrient test is a very well-rounded baseline test for assessment of deficiencies of micronutrients in contributing imbalances to disease or resulting from diseases, such as things that cause oxidative stress. It is not a standalone test. Um, it does need some context for additional biomarkers, um, inflammatory factors, dietary intake, lifestyle, and environment. So if you run it by yourself, you may end up generating more questions than um, if you run it with additional testing. What I mean by that is, on its own, you're going to go, well, why is this a deficiency? So at the very minimum, you're going to need it along with a very thorough diet intake history from your patient um, as far as what they eat on a regular basis. Ideally, it would be like a seven-day diet journal or diet intake record in order to best assess that. However, running it with other lab testing is generally recommended, especially when you have certain symptom patterns that you're trying to figure out what the root causes are. It is a quick win. So it provides you with immediately actionable items that you can work with your patient to bring symptom relief quickly. So that's why this test is so popular and why we definitely recommend it as a first line or baseline test because it is relatively straightforward and simple to address nutrient deficiencies. Um, it goes really well with a few different types of tests. I mean, you really can't go wrong with any other test you pair it with, but some of the ones that we would recommend would be things like thyroid panels. If you are looking at thyroid panels on patients, you do need to know the micronutrient status of all of those baseline nutrients that feed into the production and assimilation of thyroid hormones in the body. So it's going to help you look at some of those. Neurotransmitters also need to have a micronutrient test run, run alongside it. Given the, the exact same scenario with thyroid hormones, neurotransmitters, um, some of which are, are hormones as well, or peptides, they also require certain micronutrients in order to generate them or in order for them to be converted through their various, pathway, various pathways. So you'll want to look for micronutrient deficiencies in the context of neurotransmitter deficiencies, if that's what you're looking for. They go really well with cardiometabolic markers. So if you're running um, cardiovascular panels of any kind, lipid panels, um, oxidative, um, LDL, if you're looking at any other markers of inflammatory processes for your cardiac patients, the micronutrient test is excellent to give you an idea of which micronutrients may have some underlying deficiencies that could be producing some of those cardiovascular or metabolic um, symptoms. It's awesome to run with a gut zoomer um, because this is going to let you look at, is it possible that some of these nutrient deficiencies are actually due to an impaired gut barrier 
or malabsorption. So if you've got folks who have chronic diarrhea, for instance, um, if you're looking for the causes of that diarrhea, so maybe you, you have some IBSD and you're looking for things like pathogens or SIBO or what have you, a micronutrient test is gonna allow you to look at, is this IBS um, actually generating nutrient deficiencies? Because more often than not, it is when the gut barrier is inflamed. If you're running a total tox burden um, bundle where we're looking at environmental toxicants, we're looking at mycotoxins and we're looking at heavy metals, you're going to be wanting to look at micronutrients because you're dealing with um, often very intense or severe amounts of oxidative stress. And so you want to look for those nutrients that often get impaired or deficient because of that toxic exposure or toxic burden. Again, that's quick wins. These are things that are very easy to fix for those patients. And then also a micronutrient and a wheat zoomer is a really classic bundle that we see. This helps you shed light on leaky gut, celiac and gluten sensitivity. Um, obviously in celiac patients or patients who are headed towards celiac, where we see that villus atrophy, um, it's either present or it's starting to form if you actually went and looked at the um, scopes for those patients. So malabsorption is a concern here for these folks as well. So anyway, you can't go wrong. Any panel or test that you order a micronutrient with, these are just some suggestions for some that you may not have considered. You can order the Vibrant Micronutrient Test as a standalone test for $2.99. However, there is additional discounted bundle pricing available. So these are the current bundles that we have available already with bundle discounted pricing that involve micronutrients. So any of the ones that I've already previous mentioned, um, if you are interested in ordering those together, check in the portal because, um, and I'll show you here a screenshot in a minute, those are in the special wellness bundle portion of the ordering portal. So these are some of the bundles that you can get. Um, the micronutrient on its own is $2.99 um, as the provider price. And this is where you'll find those bundles. Um, before you get to the individual tests, there's the section that says special wellness panels. Phlebotomy for the micronutrient is a little bit different than the rest of our wellness testing. And this is something I wanna just jump into for just a second. Um, it's not the same as just the EDTA or the SST tube. It does require special handling relative to those. So please do make sure that you download the specimen collection and handling form. Um, if you're not familiar with that, or if your phlebotomist or whoever is drawing blood for you in-house is not familiar, you do wanna make sure that you're drawing the right tubes, um, sending those, and they're being sent correctly. Um, this test has a shorter sample stability because of uh, some of the types of tubes being drawn. I believe the sample stability um, is generally two days. So we do not recommend that you draw it on a Saturday uh, because we're closed on Sunday and we can't accept the sample that day. And sometimes by Monday, by the time we get the sample, that sample stability has already been passed. So um, we do recommend you only draw samples for micronutrient test Monday through Friday. And that is it. Thanks for your time. And hopefully now you have a little bit more familiarity with the vibrant micronutrient tests.